Hey guys, Dagitzer here, and this is my review of the Final Mouse Ultralight Pro Edition. I've been using this mouse as my main gaming mouse for close to six months after the release back in February. So hopefully I can provide some good insight to those wondering about this mouse. To start things off, I'll quickly talk about the technical side before moving on to my experience with the ultralight. This mouse is ideally designed for someone with medium to large hands. However, that doesn't mean you can't use it if you have small hands. It's just a recommendation that you can choose to follow or ignore. As far as the sensor is concerned, this mouse is rocking the Pixar 3360, which is pretty much the standard for modern day gaming mice. There are four DPI modes being 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. It's also worth noting that there are no holes near the sensor on the bottom of the mouse, so that doesn't affect tracking at all in case that's something that you are worried about. Speaking of the holes, that happens to be this mouse's most notable feature. In case you haven't noticed, this thing is covered in holes, reducing its weight all the way down to 67 grams, which makes it the only gaming mouse right now for large hands below 70 grams. At first, this kind of sounds like a gimmick, but from experience, I can tell you that there are actual benefits to using a mouse this light. One of them being that my hand and wrist feel so much better after long periods of gaming compared to other gaming masks that I've used in the past. Which is a big deal coming from someone who's had tendonitis for almost over a year. The fact that this mouse doesn't hurt my hand as much alone has made me a fan of this mouse. But I'm sure some of you are going to wonder, how did it affect your aim? Which is actually a pretty interesting story. As many others have said about this mouse, it does have an adjustment period. The first couple hours that you use this mouse, you're gonna feel a little off on your aim because of how light the mouse is. However, after you get past this fact, if you're anything like me, you will notice an instant improvement in your aim. Or maybe it was the ambidextrous shape. In the past, I've not been a big fan of ambidextrous mice. I've always preferred ergonomic shaped mice. However, after using this, I think I now prefer ambidextrous mice. I think that's due to the fact that this mouse only has the buttons on the left side and not both left and right. When I've tried other ambidextrous mice like the SteelSeries Rival 310, that bothered me and it kept me from holding the mouse the way I wanted to. So Final Mouse get the thumbs up from me for only including buttons on the left side of the mouse. As far as I'm concerned, everybody that I've talked to also prefers it this way. In fact, if you don't, I want to know in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you like your mouse buttons on both sides of the mouse or if you prefer it to where there's only buttons on one side of the mouse so you're not constantly pressing them when you're trying to swipe around your mouse. This is part of the review where I talk about some of the things I didn't like with this mouse. And honestly, there are some major flaws with this mouse that may make it a pass for you. Let me explain. The first thing I noticed within a week of using this mouse is the scroll wheel would randomly activate on its own sometimes. Now if you play CSGO and you have your bunny hopping bound to the scroll wheel, this is a major problem. And honestly, it's a deal breaker for some of you. To make sure it wasn't just specifically the model that I got, I asked some of my friends that also use the Final Mouse Ultralight if they have this problem. Turns out every single one of them also have experienced this problem. The good news is it doesn't always happen and it is kind of rare. However, when it does happen, it can be the most frustrating thing in the world at that time. My second gripe with this mouse is kind of a weird one and I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, so I'll just try my best. After about a month and a half of using the mouse, I noticed that my left click started to sound and feel a little weird. It began to take more pressure to press it all the way down to activate it and it started to make this echoey sound that was very faint, but you could hear it if you listened closely enough. This problem seemed to resolve itself somewhat. It seems to come and go. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Some people on Reddit have suggested it might be faulty adhesive somewhere inside the mouse. I'm not quite sure. What I do know is it is very annoying when it happens. However, other than those two things, I haven't really come across anything else that really bothers me about this mouse. So in conclusion, this mouse has a few major problems with it that may stop some people from buying it. However, I can tell you from my personal experience, even with those flaws, this mouse is still my favorite mouse because it's the only mouse that is light enough to not hurt my hand and it also helped my aim a lot. So because of this, I still have to recommend this mouse. However, I do so with caution and I would advise you if you were looking to buy this mouse, really think about what I've said in this video and if those problems would really bother you, I would honestly stay away from this mouse. Anyways guys, that is it. If you guys liked the video, make sure to like this video and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Woo! Oh, final mouse. Woo! <laughs> oh, no.